And awesome. So everybody, thank you so much for joining season two, episode two. Um, today, we're very excited to sit down with our special guest, Taz Fraser. Taz from um, Cider Girl, Girl with a Cider Review, sorry. Thank you so much for joining us, Taz. No problem. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Um, and everything's going good. I mean, it's been a crazy week, so you doing yeah. okay otherwise? Yeah, doing good. Very busy, but uh, managing. That's awesome. And we also, as always, have my good brother, Robin, aka the bearded guy to beer with us here. Robin, man, how's it going? It is going incredibly well. Uh, yeah, it has been a bit of a crazy week. I, I think for anybody uh, who is living on planet Earth, you guys know that uh, the US pretty much exploded last week with what happened. Um, and it's been an interesting week just to kind of see everybody's feedback and what everybody had to say about that topic as well. Yeah, it has been. I know um, Taz, you and I have been chatting a lot and and posting a lot, and it's uh, it's it's interesting because before we we planned to talk with you, uh, we've been talking for a few weeks about this now. So we had already plans on discussing some serious issues that are in um, our craft community, and and now we're faced with even more. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> been a wild one so I, I first off I do want to say thank you as well for being you know vocal and using your platform um, we talk about it a lot and it is so important to do so I appreciate you using your voice you don't have to so it's nice to see you do it <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll jump in as far as getting to know a little bit about Taz so again you guys it's um, at a girl with cider review on Instagram and Taz is a very very um, you know vocal member of the craft cider community when it comes to as we said social justice issues but she's also got some amazing content on her instagram so how did you get into the, the cider community cider in general like what was that an intro yeah. drink for you yeah um the intro drink was probably summer's b one of the sweeter ciders to exist on mm -hmm. this side <laughs> of the planet and that was actually i started three years ago it'll be three years actually next month so i'm really excited about that because nice. so much has happened um in those three years for sure of course um during that time when i first started looking into ciders summer's b was one of the only things that was around i was like oh i don't know what this is but i guess i'll try it I kind of liked it. I had sweeter tastes back then. So it was super easy to drink. And I was like, oh, I kind of like this. And then more things started coming out. And I was like, oh, this is cider too. It's mm -hmm. so different from Summer's Bee or the sweet, sweet ciders. And um, so I tried a bunch of different ones. And then the scene started expanding. And I started learning a bit more about the ciders themselves, the people behind them. And uh, it really took off here in Canada in terms of, especially in Ontario, the amount of cideries and ciders that um, one have made it into the liquor stores and independent businesses and um, just so many different things to try. And the Instagram itself uh, started, yeah, again, three years ago, kind of um, just a thing one day I was like, okay, I'll just make this Instagram. My sister said a joke about me doing it. So I did. And then <laughs> <laughs> here we are, but I, <laughs> it expanded into so much more, as you know, um, I've been able to merge a bunch of passions of mine into one place, which is amazing and meet so many great people who also have similar values. Um, may that be companies or other reviewers or people in the drink community too. Mm -hmm. So I'm really thankful for all the opportunities I've had and being able to grow this way. That's awesome. It's so funny. Uh, you, you talk about that Gateway Cider Somersby. I think <laughs> a lot of folks, that's their, their Gateway yeah. Cider, you know, I, even for myself, like I, I've never, you know, been super, super into ciders. I like the, the very, very dry ones mm -hmm. just because they, I don't like things that are too, too sweet. Yeah. But uh, in general, uh, that was the one that I had tried first. Uh, I think a lot of folks use that to kind of get into ciders. And I think much like beers, ciders have evolved so much over the past few years. Like, Companies out there like, um, I guess, Ravel's doing ciders. Um, even Bellwoods had done a cider at one point in time, a collaboration that they had done. It, the scene is absolutely incredible. And uh, Taz, you talked about your, your Instagram, which everybody should definitely check out. Um, but in addition to your Instagram, there's a live show that you do, which is Ciders and Life. You're 22 episodes <laughs> in, which is really impressive and incredible. Can you talk to us a little bit about when you started and what prompted you to start Cider and Life? Yeah, um, I think, oh man, I think I started it in possibly... October or November now I actually don't even remember because I try to do it weekly so 
my math's bad, but if I had to count back, <laughs> it'd probably be one of those months. Um, but how that started was I, I really love to connect with people in the community. And that's one of the things that, um, make me want to continue to be part of this community is the connections that I've had with other people. So may that be through experiences at Sideries and the amazing connections or experiences I've had meeting the owners and meeting people who work there. I just wanted to know more about people's story and why they're part of this community. Cause I feel it's really important. There are people behind every sort of business and that includes cider, that includes beer, that includes all drinks in the drink industry. And I want to know more about those people because a drink is a drink. You can talk about a drink, but the drink didn't make itself. The people did. So that's what I want to know about. So I started to think of ideas to, you know, create this chat, um, not just about cider, but about people in general and who they are and what their passions are. So I call it cider in life. <laughs> so I can talk a little bit about cider, but a little bit about life and the people behind the cider too. So I started getting at first, um, I got reviewers, so people like myself that reviewed cider or beer, and then I started branching off into um, people that work at cider companies or breweries, so cider makers or people involved in the process, and then I could learn a little bit more about cider and share that with an audience too who maybe want to get into something related and then uh, make it interactive. And that's what I like about the Instagram TV components that people can watch live and they can ask questions and they can learn things. And it's important to, you know, if you are passionate about something to learn more about it. And I like that educational piece too. Oh, it sounds so familiar. Hey, Robin, it sounds familiar. That's <laughs> I know. It's so funny. As, saying. as she's saying that, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds, sounds about right. I mean, we started the podcast because uh, we met some incredible people on Instagram, mm -hmm. built so many connections. And, you know, the, the, the core interest that we had in beer wasn't just in the beer itself, but it was in the community and the people that are involved in the beers, right? And uh, I think as much like you, you know, we, we loved having those conversations with brewers every time we can have them on and not just talking just about beer, but also their thoughts on, you know, the beer community and everything else around it. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds like uh, a little bit like uh, Taz might even have a, a podcast coming up soon. Ciders in life. You're 22 episodes <laughs> in, Taz. Maybe, you're, maybe. <laughs> yeah. you're doing better at keeping up to the weekly release schedule than we did last year. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try my best. It's a busy it's, life outside of it. So. <laughs> you got to keep up on it. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, really. Plan ahead, right? <laughs> That's <of> awesome. <laughs> I love it. It's, you know, it's funny you talk about like you, you kind of burgeoned alongside the burgeoning cider industry because you're right i remember i would say like 10 years ago i would be drinking like bulmers or something from england like you know pro yeah. old school dries right there wasn't anything else in that's the only kind of ciders you could get at the yeah. liquor store 10 15 years ago and then summersby and i think for me that's i've watched and i've tried to talk to my dad's a huge summersby fan and i was like <laughs> dad like look at all these other ciders on this whole other wall of this liquor store you need to expand your cider because um i I've, i have to too because i've heard there's some amazing ones out there mm. Um, my favorite, have you had Lalo Brewery's, um, Bonita cider? No, I haven't. Okay, you I need, hate being stumped. <laughs> you need, so it's, a, it's like a guava okay. mango oh. cider, but they use Belgian yeasts in it from like okay. a, a Belgian beer style. So it's got a lot, it's like thicker than a typical Is it cider. A hopped cider or? No, I don't believe so. No, okay. it's no. not a hop on there. No, okay. and it's so if you if, if if it ever releases, I'll let you know. And we'll try to get you get your hands on that. Yeah, that one sounds amazing. It is like the number one cider that I've ever had. It's just out of this world. Pretty um, wild. But but as you know, I was as I was leading into like you kind of grew you, you almost kind of grew alongside this growing cider industry and everywhere we see cideries. Where do you see kind of a girl with a cider review going or cider and life kind of going to in the future? What are your plans maybe for in twenty twenty one? Yeah, for, th for this year, I have quite a few plans and continuing cider in life, of course, is one of them. And I'm trying to expand cider in life, not just to North America. I, I know I've had a couple of people from Europe on um, last year, but I'm trying to expand more to reach um, cider companies or breweries around the world. Nice. So that's one of the goals for that this year. Um, but in terms of the account in general, of course, um, so many things have been happening and I'm trying, I have my own project going on right now with my Instagram. So I'm trying to one grow that. So no apologies. I'm trying to grow that project. Um, 
in, I guess, Canada right now and expanding is it has reached other countries too. So I'm trying to be able to um, reach more companies and hear if, you know, this is something they support and get more transparency on what companies are doing in terms of these practices that, you know, you don't hear too much about. May that be either um, mm -hmm. regarding sexism or diversity or inclusion, things like that. Um, so those are some of the big things. Um, of course, I'm going to continue to, you know, with my normal strange content <laughs> <laughs> reviewing ciders. But uh, one of the big things this year is only um, doing, I guess, like paid partnerships or um, larger amounts of content with companies that actually match my values and being way more mindful of that because I don't want to be promoting something that doesn't match who I am. Nice. Um, and I, I think that that's important for everyone to be doing, especially as they grow and as they get larger as an influencer too. It's so funny you say that because Ryan's a big advocate of that also is the, <laughs> trying to make sure, you know, with that we, we really voice our opinions on different topics mm. that are happening in the industry and also supporting those places that also then go on to support the, the different types of causes that we believe in. And that hashtag that you have, no apologies. Um, this came up just a while back, and I think a lot of our listeners don't really know the origin story behind it. Would you mind taking a few moments to just kind of share with us how that came to be? Yeah, so it seems like it's been a while now, but it only started in December. So what had happened in December is I was just having a normal fun day looking at cider stuff. And I was scrolling through Twitter when I saw a tweet um, from someone in the cider community, a male in the cider community, who had posted a tweet um, saying, girls be promoting cider like with six pictures of one being myself and five of my other um, peers in the cider community wearing swimsuits or, you know, whatever one would wear to the beach in the summer. I insinuating that, you know, this is how we gain our followers and attention um, in the community and disregarding all of the knowledge and experience that we had. And a lot of us are quite established in the community. So it's not really, and you know, you had to really look for those pictures because a lot of us, you know, we post swimsuit pictures in the summer, but not that it matters what you're wearing anyway, because it shouldn't, but this person looked for these just to make this post. So I was obviously upset as many of the other women were. Uh, however, this isn't the first time something like this has happened to me in the community. Um, luckily, I can say it hasn't been many times, but it still exists, so it still matters. Um, I wanted to do something to turn a negative experience into something that would create change for not just myself, but for everyone, not just the women who are affected, but everyone who identifies as a woman in this industry, because I know that there's a lot more than this um, experience. I wouldn't call it small or um, I don't know what word I'm looking for, a small scale, because um, it it's kind of a mask for a larger issue. That's what I found when I started talking about it. So when I created the movement, more people started telling me, you know, I've been rejected from jobs because I'm a woman in this industry. My knowledge is questioned. Yeah. Um, I've experienced harassment or sexual violence or things like that. And it's a lot more than that. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. It's not just about the pictures and being empowered. It's about changing a large issue that continues to happen. And all it took is someone saying something to bring this up. And I understand it's a scary thing to do. And it was scary for me too, to bring this up, but it needs to be done and things need to change. So the hashtag um, originally started. So what we were doing was we were posting pictures, uh, women in the industry with the hashtag, um, talking about, you know, why we love the industry, what we want to change, what would make it a safer place for us, and just getting that word out. Um, we've had a lot of companies that um, fewer than I want, but at least some posting in support of this. And that's a bigger goal this year is to get more um, people that have influence in the community to be speaking on these issues. But that's one part of it. But we're creating a video soon to talk more in depth about it. Um, women have submitted videos from around the world in the cider community. So I'm really excited about that. Um, there have also been t-shirts that uh, portions of the proceeds for those go to Canadians Women's Foundation. They're from a small local company in Guelph that makes the shirts and then part of the proceeds go to that organization in Canada to help um, women live free from violence um, in the country. So Fantastic. that's some of the things that have been going on, but hopefully planning to expand that. 
Love it. And wow. and that clothing company, I think, is Smiles Apparel, right? It is. Yeah. Shout out to Smiles They're Apparel. They're lovely. Yes, she is. Um, <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's, uh, when, when we had, a, we've had a few guests, a few women guests in the industry that have said the exact same sentiment you have said. And it's, it's just, it seems to be this repetitive cycle that uh, exists, that exists behind a veil that most people don't see unless they're told about it. Like you said, like your experience was the tip of the iceberg for you. It's like, once you started to kind of unravel that it was like Pandora's box and it's like, Oh shit, this goes yep. deep. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're right. You hear about all the time. I think I saw a post just the other day and I, I had cross posted and it said the difference between uh, a, a woman and a male influencer and in the pay, or even like a, a white woman and a black woman and the difference in pay so there's all these disparities. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it just, it shocks me because like, I, I know all of these amazing women in this interview and how knowledgeable they are. So it's like, how could some idiot just think that it's, there's nothing, no substance behind the content, right? Like um, there are, you can tell those accounts if they are there, you know, there's people that have content and you know, there's people that have yeah. a value in what they're producing. And I, I love the response. The response was amazing. I saw so many people post pictures. <laughs> I wanted to give a shout out to Mary uh, Craft Beer Bailey for also vocalizing and amplifying that message because she was also subject to that experience last year too. Christ, that was only December. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> wow, yeah. what a long 40 days. <laughs> <laughs> feels like it <laughs> it was like forever go well because yeah it like does. i i i you know i posted for the picture in my my bathing suit out back to it and i remember it shows, and that felt like it was months ago um so tell me about the response because i know like it was amazing there was a lot of amplified support for you so tell me a little bit about the response and, and what people yeah. were saying so originally what i had done was um collected i guess names and instagram handles of people who were interested in the pictures to post. So I had like two Instagram groups running. So we knew when we were gonna start posting them. However, like once we started, I thought my phone was gonna be dead forever. Like I couldn't <laughs> do anything on Instagram because I was just getting so many notifications all nice. the time. And there was so much support and comments and reposts and stories. And it felt like it was something that, you know, people related to, which of course is, sad because this shouldn't be happening but also that it's amazing because they felt that it was okay to post because there were so many people that were behind them and there with them and that's kind of what I feel like it takes not feeling like you're alone anymore mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people even posted pictures like of themselves that never post pictures of their face in their pictures because they're worried about these kind of comments that we get for posting pictures mm -hmm. but they did to support something like this and that was really really powerful for me to see that um, and we got a lot of support from males in the community and the uh, craft beverage industry. And that was amazing to see too. And I just feel like having that support from people that don't identify as a woman is also powerful because it says that I'm here with you. I'm not going to let this happen to you. And I see that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need a little bit more of, um, not us having to, it, whether that be like for women or for um, diverse populations or for different cultures, backgrounds, et cetera. Like we shouldn't have to be always fighting for ourselves. Um, it's a lot about people being educated and stepping on board with something that maybe one, you know, they want to learn more about or um, taking a stand against people that may not have those same uh, opinions per se as they do. You know, I was really surprised when I saw everything go down and I was talking to my wife about it just, it's it's crazy sometimes the kind of hate that you see online in social media and how people yeah. feel like they have a kind of a right sometimes to say the kinds of hateful and hurtful things that they say. Um, it's just so unfortunate. And I know that you're talking about taking no apologies this year and really running with that. Uh, I You know, last year we had conversations about diversity and we were talking about maybe the idea of more breweries integrating a diversity education into mm. the curriculum that they already have. Now, like, where do you see yourself taking no apologies? And would that be something that you would perhaps be interested in in the future? Yes, 100%. Definitely. That is on the agenda. 
Um, that's why one of the big things is getting more companies on board with um, something like this and being, like I said, transparent about one, their policies or their support for things like this, whether that be for BIPOC communities or for women, um, just because I know that I don't know what it is that maybe, you know, they just want to post their content and they don't want to talk about these things. However, it's a big thing and ignoring it makes it seem worse on you as a company. Mm -hmm. um, and I think over time, um, businesses may realize that. Um, and I know for me actively, I'm going to be bringing it up with any of the partnerships I have, especially if they haven't been seeing anything. I'm planning on doing it tomorrow. Um, I have a meeting with a company tomorrow and that's something that I wanna talk about because it's not something that's being done and I wanna to continue to partner with them, but I, I do want the transparent public support for what I'm doing and what's happening here. Cause I think that that's important, especially if I'm using my time to promote their products. I feel like I should at least be getting the support for the things that I stand for. So yeah. that's what I'm hoping for that. That's a, a good point you make there on the last uh, and the last little bit about kind of return on investment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the things I, I've come into this year kind of really wanting to crack open more is the, uh, you know, the, in the craft community, especially with cideries and breweries, you have that brewery influencer relationship where you have a, a kind of almost a marketing type based relationship what is the ROI for you? And what is the ROI for them? Like, mm -hmm. aside from you get it, aside from an influencer getting free product to market, and aside from the brewery getting free market space, what is the actual return return on investment and values like you're talking about? And that's, that's a huge thing. I really think that needs to be looked at more in depth in this in the craft community as a whole. Um, heck maybe even in the influencer community as a whole, mm -hmm. because right. That it's, it goes beyond drink. It's that, what are your values and yes. are you giving a product to somebody that's representative of the, and vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you, there has to be, um, an accountability checkpoint or something that says, like you said, like that, I will do this for you, but you have to be accountable to my value and brand. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And that's turning that no hashtag, no apologies into, uh, like kind of that, seal of approval or something that they're like, you know, this is, you know, you're going to represent me and this is your seal of approval. Like you stand for what I stand for. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's something that's really important. I mean, most of the products I promote, I try to, you know, align my, or have them align their self with my values so we can work together because we have similar values. Um, but I know that that's something that is not always the focus in regards to influencers like they'll just promote a product just because they get a free product but mm -hmm. it's always been more than that and I know for me and I know for quite a few of my peers in the community as well it's it's more than that and I I don't want to promote something that I don't believe in and it, it's just unfortunate that sometimes that does happen because you know <laughs> I don't really care about the free <laughs> products as much as the message behind everything and how I'm portrayed and how my brand is portrayed because I'm a lot more than like promoting free products. Yeah. It's like the equivalent of purchase power, right? Yeah. 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 And, and, and we, we don't, we've never been given free products to promote. So nope. we're not about promoting free shit either. So. <laughs> 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 don't know how no, like we're, look, no, we're here. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> don't worry. It'll come. It'll come. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy that like sometimes people forget the fact that there's a certain type of social responsibility that exists mm -hmm. when you're online. And it reminds me of, you know, not, pre pre influencers pre social media the idea of hearing an actor an actress and you know certain behaviors that they have and then when they're being asked about those behaviors they say well th this is my personal life like you, you can't really ask me about this yeah. when the truth is that like as an individual that you might not know people are looking up to you as you have a voice that people are listening to and that voice comes with a certain social responsibility and we got to use that voice sometimes to show the rest of the world that there is something that's happening that needs notice and that's something that you do beautifully Taz is you know really help educate the world on all of these different topics that are happening whether it be in the world of ciders or beers or in that Instagram community. Thank you yeah and I, I try my best to you know do what you said to use my influence to be able to um, help people notice these things that are happening because I know it is difficult to merge the things that you 
believe in was something that, you know, you would at first classify as just like a hobby and like a, escape from other world issues. And I know that that's what it is for other people, but I recognize that it's very important to be, especially as someone who is looked up to and your opinions valued to be using it for things like this. Cause I don't know, I may not be able to reach everyone on a normal day, but in online, the amount of people you can reach everywhere that care about what you have to say, um, that you could be sharing these important topics with, I think that's really important to be doing. And I know that sometimes that doesn't happen and there's many reasons why, and I'm hoping <laughs> that that will change for other people too. Um, but I do recognize that, you know, you worry if you post about other stuff, no one's going to care about what you have to say anymore, but the people that matter and whose values align with yours, it'll only make the relationship stronger once they see that you're brave enough to talk about something like this. Um, when, you know, you just post about ciders normally, for yeah. example. <laughs> but, right. In, in the wise words of the great uh, Ed at T. Drinks, you, if you can reach one person, then you've done your duty as an influencer. Yes. And um, I, you know, I never really looked at myself as somebody to influence, you know, we do this for fun. But then once this, once the, you know, it all May 25th last year, when um, George Floyd happened in, in his murder and everything after that, it was just kind of like we, Robin and I both were like, yeah, you know, like this, it's more than just beer pictures and it's more than just, um, talking about beer like we have a responsibility to bring the issues to the forefront of our platform regardless of whether we get one listener 500,000 listeners someday um <laughs> we we have that responsibility to use our voice for good and I posted I posted on the one today like you know you have a voice you can use your voice for good you can use your voice for bad or you can choose to use your voice not at all which is pretty much status quo in the uh in the craft community it seems mm -hmm. these days and you know it's it's funny because i've always been passionate about things i've always been passionate in the in my life and i do my things my fundraising and working with the uh, youth shelter for many years and stuff but that's stuff stuff i never thought to broadcast but then when it comes to these types of issues like these are legitimate issues that happen every single day to you know, we, we can talk about every marginalized group. Uh, we can talk about women. We can talk about BIPOC. We can talk about ableism. You know, every group is impacted in one way or another. And we have our voice to stick up. We, it's a responsibility for us to do so. And it's, a, and it's a responsibility for us to do it, I feel, consistently. You can't be the one and done, um, do it when all eyes are on me type of voice. Um, like you said, like when you, you said it best, like those friendships you create because of your value and consistency and standing up for those people, those are more than fr like, those are bigger than normal friendships to me. Mm -hmm. um, like the friendships I've created with people in the last year, just, and, and lost a lot in the same, but the ones I've gained, obviously way more valuable. They say quality over quantity. True. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah it's crazy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it's sad to, you know, lose people that you thought you had friendships with, but uh, it, it's worth it in the long run to gain mm -hmm. ones that are stronger. You become kind of a family almost um, having those strong shared values and know that you're going to have each other's back and you're going to be there for each other. Um, and that's, that's kind of why the Sider community is really important to me because that's what I feel when I'm in it. And I want it to be a safe place for everyone. And if it's not feeling like that, then, you know, something needs to change, obviously. Yeah, hundred percent. That's totally true. And I think, I mean, I've never had to experience that. Look at, I, I pretty much epitomize the beer drinker craft industry minus the beard. I don't have the beard. Robin stole my grand, my, you know, my grand beard for, you know, oh, don't worry. I, I, this is enough for the hair on your head and another beard. On yeah, your that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> What did this turn into? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Beard okay. wars. Beard I'm, I'm, wars. I'm all over it. No, but yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it's something that, and I, we would love to have you back too, because we, we have a new program. We're releasing one of our goals this year is to keep this format to talk with people in the community, like yourself, um, breweries and stuff. 
And we have another program we're going to be launching called The Panel, which is literally to discuss real issues like no apologies, uh, diversity, you know, Black, Indigenous people in the industry, representation, everything that matters. And we want you to come back to talk about um, the, you know, the sexism component in the industry, what you experience. But I think also would love to have you on the influencer part, because we want to do a talk about yeah. relationships between mm -hmm. businesses and influencers and really crack that egg open to open up the responsibility for both sides. Like there needs to be an accountability piece. Maybe there's a social contract that needs to be created within our community where if you're going to represent a business and if they're going to pair with you, you both have to align on things. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And that would be amazing to come and talk about that. Thank you for thinking of me. Of course. Well, hey, I mean, you're, like we said, you're, you use your voice and you, you choose to. So it's always great to have an insight into why people do and, and their opinion and, and vision as to not, <coughs> not COVID, excuse me, their social responsibility, but also, um, you know, kind of what they, where you envision the future of our industry. Like, where do you see the future of the influencer in our industry. Like I know, cause you have obviously goals with no apologies and building that into it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think if um, I know with no apologies and being myself and having that uh, on top of everything else, um, I know that it's been difficult to now one, like choose which partnerships I want to have and be an influencer in the sense that like is the, textbook definition of an influencer because and I've always been kind of uncomfortable with the word mm -hmm. until I kind of had to sit and reflect on that because it, it's more than just being someone who gets products and promotes them just because you got free things it doesn't matter if you like it or not or if you know it's not sustainable or there's a lot of issues behind how it's produced etc um it's a lot more than that. And that's kind of what may make it difficult for influencers that do care about other topics, especially if the partnerships that they have or the people that want them to promote things are not on board with that. So I think that it will be really important for companies to start stepping up. And that's my hope. And I know that I'm not going to get every partnership maybe because of this, but that says a lot more about the company than it does about me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm ready to accept because these are really important issues and enough is enough with having to continue to push for these things because it shouldn't have to be a question of whether or not this is okay because it's not and it's not an opinion whether or not it's okay it's another human it's their rights it's who they are and you know I know a lot of people are tired of it as well so I'm you know, ready to accept that not every partnership will work out, but I know that the ones will, um, will, you know, work out for the best. In spades. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the huge, right? Understanding the values of an organization beyond the product that they just, that they're creating. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people's values may not align with that organization yet they continue to support it based on product alone. And I think if we learn more about the values that the organization has, as a corporation or as an individual almost, we can then more objectively start to choose where our money is going to go. Like, do we yeah. want to support this organization that has those values that maybe don't align with what we believe in, or do they align with what we believe in, and then we further support them. So if anything, uh, I think that, you know, it just creates more of that line. It helps us understand like who we should and shouldn't be supporting. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree. Yeah. Again, put your money where you want to, uh, you know, where your values align, put, promote your product where your values align, right? So it's the same thing. And it's, it is difficult because I think, and you said it earlier, um, we don't know, sometimes people don't say what they're doing. And there is that kind of responsibility to be vocal in these matters because yeah. you can throw your money at something, but if your values don't align with what you're throwing your money at, then it's fruitless. It has absolutely mm -hmm. zero you know, validity to the, the cause. Sure, you're throwing money at it, but you know, that's like, I mean, that's like homelessness, you know, we can, you can throw money at it, but until you fix the root cause, you're not going to stop homelessness, right? It's no different than what we face in our industries when it comes to sexism, racism, um, the hate to the LGBTQ plus community. Like these are systemic underlying root issues um, that we need to start digging at, you know, I'm a gardener and you need to get down to the roots to dig out the bad shit. If you want your plants to do well. 
Exactly. So, I, you know, take that as a metaphor for our industry. You know, we got to dig out the bad shit to plant the good stuff, like to let the, the, the ones that values align with progress to flourish. Exactly. 100% and agree. On that note, fuck founders. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like thinking about that. This whole time. <laughs> and I, I saw your uh, post too about how many mutual followers you had. And I checked mine. I was like, oh my gosh. Right. So uncomfortable. <laughs> but they might not even know. Cause I guess like everyone yeah. just at one point just follows everyone that just don't, maybe they don't know, but hopefully they have a look. If you're in craft, like, I don't know if you're in craft beer, drunk pokeroo and Ed have been saying fuck founders for a long time, long, like a few years. So if you're paying it, people are paying attention. It's just either they don't care. I think it's, I, I honestly start to think it's now less of don't know. Ignorance is not an excuse anymore. Yeah. It's you don't care. That's really what it comes down to in my, in my opinion you can't witness what happened last week and be like, well, yeah, no, that's totally not what it was. Like, yeah, like, well, yeah, like it totally was. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way around that. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I'm looking forward to what you're going to be doing um, in 2021 and beyond for the industry, because I'm, I'm very glad that like you align with kind of our values, what not kind of totally with our values and what we want to do too. So I'm excited to see your work in progress and, and looking forward to talking with you more on these topics and beyond. Um, it would be, you know, it's, it's just going to be a crazy year in a good way. I think 2020 was a shit show. So yeah, um, it can only be better this year. I, think so. I hope I so. Hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least we're prepared for it this year. Last year, Jim, I know. we knew what was happening. At least this year, we know what we're getting ourselves into. Exactly. Yeah, no doubt. I can't wait till February till I get to have a real beer though. <laughs> you that'll and be me both. gorgeous <laughs> that'll be gorgeous now now taz i did mention at the top um we do have a little fun segment at the end okay. which has no neat cool sound effects or any cool video <laughs> swipes yet um but we're gonna join the hopsy and um random questions so i'm gonna start okay. totally ultimately random question what is the ultimate movie snack for you um Cool Ranch Doritos. Nice. Cool Ranch Doritos. Oh, good I like cool shoes ranch. on Have that. Have you ever had the Cool Ranch Dorito taco? No. From Taco Bell? No. It's totally not. eaten at Taco Bell. It's totally not good back. for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a Cool Ranch Dorito shell and taco okay. inside of it. Oh, well. <laughs> Might be a good one to take to a movie. <laughs> Robin, I feel Taco Bell does this. They, they have like a flaming hot shell, a cool ranch yeah. shell. Like that, that's a thing. Good once a year, only once a year. Yeah, good once a year. And then you regret it for that yeah. next 364 oh, yeah. days. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's right. Like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> Robin, what's your ultimate movie snack? Oh, geez. Um, uh, man, okay. An ultimate movie snack for me is going to be something that's a little bit more non conventional. <laughs> I'll say like a hot dog would be okay. more of a movie treat for me you know i they used to work in a movie theater and i used to love the hot dogs uh, mm -hmm. I was more you just like bring like 10 hot dogs to the movie like that's it they make the best of hot dogs. i'm gonna bring the hot dogs and then we have hot dogs for everybody at the theater <laughs> that's what's going on. <laughs> well if we're talking sneaking stuff in then it's obviously a cold beer but oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i one of my ultimates my mom used to do all the time was whoppers inside the bag mm. of popcorn and then shake up the popcorn and the whoppers oh my God, that's, that's awesome. a good one so m&ms like, or whoppers yeah, yeah. Mm. that sounds so good the ultimate movie snack that's i'm getting hungry yeah. yeah i know me too yeah. Where am I right? <laughs> no doritos in sight <laughs> so I've got a question that kind of ties in with a trend that we've been seeing in the beer industry. Now, over the last couple of years, there's this kind of style of beer that Ryan seems to hate a lot, which is known <laughs> as a slushy beer. And I was going through your Instagram feed and I saw that you tried a slushy cider one time. I did. So now online with that, if you could create a slushy cider, what cidery would that be with? Ooh, slushy cider. Um, cool. That's a good question. They're really good in the summer, by the way. And I know, like, to me, beer slushies seem odd. Ciders, like, maybe have, like, tropical flavors or something, maybe in the summer. I don't know. Oh, they do make way more sense. There's but, no doubt about yeah. that. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking maybe the first thing I thought of was Brickworks in Toronto, mm. um, but also Thornbury in Collingwood. Nice. They all have really cool, like, fruity flavors. I know um, 
thornberry i'm obsessed with their raspberry apple cider so making that into kind of like a raspberry slushy or they have a blood orange which would be amazing in the summer in a slushy too oh that sounds i think maybe them that's the first ones i thought of Yes, well, the beer slushies are the new fad, and they're fruited beer slushies. I like. I'm the same. I don't know. I'll, I'll try one this year. I promised the, the Bebo at Third Moon I would try one. We um, want a review. A full I need. Review. Yeah, I need to do a legit. I can't say. I can't say I hate it until I've tried it, yeah. but I can say I don't agree with the concept or whatever. Right. So, but yeah. slushy ciders sound a little more good, legitimate. Really I, good. Was I planned to stop in at Thornberry when we were we went up that way to go fishing, but they weren't open at seven oh. in the morning for me. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know that early, but. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I love, uh, so we got what slushies snacks. Um, all right. So ultimates that what is the one song that Taz would have on repeat on a road trip? Oh no. Songs. Uh, what is even my favorite song? Like when everyone asks about songs, I'm like, I don't even know music anymore. Like, what is music? <laughs> um, <laughs> my i'm thinking my spotify like top like music now what was my um, 2020 top 2020 song <laughs> i think on a road trip i really like city in color um cool. they're canadian yeah um they're really nice and folky and relaxed for i guess long drives but um <laughs> when i was a bit younger i was really big into like metal and hard rock and things like that and <laughs> I was obsessed with Metallica. I don't know why, but I got a tattoo with one of their songs too. So I can't nice. erase that, but maybe Metallica or there something like that. <laughs> I was going to say folk song on a long road trip. Yeah, I would crash in 20 minutes. Yeah, I can't so peaceful. <laughs> hour. I can't go an hour without like having to roll the window down and put Pantera on full blast because like I'm a hip hop guy, but to stay awake on the road trip is just that heavy. Yeah, metal. you're right. Uh, mine would be Walk by Pantera on repeat. Okay. Just, just all the way, <laughs> hanging out the window, choice. keeping awake. <laughs> I was actually going to oh, make a man. joke about that song. So it's so funny that you said that. The really? No doubt. Eh? <laughs> It kind of relates to what's going on in the social media world. Eh? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, good chooses. Now I got a I got a strange question that ties in with music, so be prepared for this one. All right. If you were stuck on a desert island, what three ciders and one music album would you take with you? She um, gave this one to her for homework, Robin. Jesus. I know. <laughs> she looks stressed. Taz, I'm going to make you run through your list. <laughs> Top three right now on the spot. Favorite <laughs> album. Okay, well, I'll do the cider part first. Uh, I'm trying to think. Okay, Thornberry, I think I would bring uh, their raspberry apple cider. Um, Try this one. Another one I really liked this year was uh, Heartwood Cidery from Acton. Um, okay. They have a black currant cider called Current Affair. Ooh. I'm obsessed with it. I love black currant. It's the only one I've ever liked because the other ones taste too artificial. And I think they use like syrups instead of actual currant. Right. But they use actual currant that they grow on their farm. Wow. Oh, so nice. that one's amazing. And then um, Chill Street, which I'm currently doing a partnership with, they're in um, Elmsdale, Nova Scotia. They have a honey mango cider that's called sweet temptation it's amazing it's one of my top ones this year it's just Whoa. so good i nice. can't even explain the flavor to you because it's just too good <laughs> to explain uh, but they're all like summery kind of flavors i guess that's what i think about when i think of a desert island yes um in terms of the album piece um Right back to Metallica, the Black Album. No, yeah, that's my favorite one. Actually. But, uh, no, probably some. I, I like, I really like Khalid, that yeah. pop oh, yeah. artist. He, yeah. I don't know what it is. He just has so much passion in his music and his albums. So maybe one of his albums, because he has nice. so many like reflective songs about life. Yeah. He's so young too, yeah. so it's just amazing to hear that from someone. So maybe one of his or. I like a lot of electronic stuff as well, but in terms of albums, probably something with more like substance to the words and things like that. Yeah, no, good choose. Khaled's yeah. awesome, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Something to reflect on while you're alone on a desert island reflecting. I'm crying. <laughs> <Sorry. Fire. laughs> that would be a hard one. I couldn't do a top three beer. I don't even know an album I would bring. You wouldn't want my albums on that desert island. Nobody'd come to rescue me. Like, we're not going over there. Too loud. <laughs> It's right too loud. 
<laughs> is that Ice Cube over there? Like, what's going on? Uh, they're probably thinking there's a reason you're on here. <laughs> it'd be Wu Tang Thirty Six Chambers. It'd probably be the album. Okay. That would be my album. Good choice. Good top choice. three beers. I I could say top three styles. It have to be a wheat beer, a lager, and like a West Coast IPA. Okay. Not sure which one, but those three styles. If those if those are the three styles, yeah, that's a tough one, Robin. Those are like it research is. It is. questions. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, 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 I know that's a tough one, but for me, I, I, I was going to say, he's probably Maverick. ready. He's probably <laughs> no, ready for this. No, I, I should have been more prepared, I feel, <laughs> with that one. But Illumatic would be the album, um, just because there's so many different hip-hop producers on there that are involved that kind of gives a, a nice flavor for the time period. Um, top three beers I'd probably want to take with me would be um, a super hazy New England IPA uh, that Ryan might not like, <laughs> uh, a West Coast IPA that Ryan might like, <laughs> and probably a uh, stout as well. But I, I wouldn't know which ones. That that you know, much like you're saying, that it's, it's a little bit hard to know sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, even reflecting and kind of thinking how I threw that question, at you, a little bit tough one for sure. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> on, on a stout on a desert island, you got to go bourbon barrel aged so you can oh, yeah, fall yeah, asleep. Yeah. You want to yeah. be able to pass out on that island. That's why pirates drink rum i assume so they can pass out on the <laughs> desert right. island right? <laughs> i'm assuming i don't know it sounds about right we can't ask them to prove it but <laughs> not today but the, oh, again my throat um well i think you know we'll wrap it up here taz i before okay. we go i really again i really wanted to thank you so much not for joining us only for joining us but for being a voice in the community um and one that is, you know, consistent and is passionate and you do it from your heart because we talked about it at the beginning there, you know, there are people who do and don't. And I'm so glad that we were able to have you on to talk about what you've been doing in the cider community, which is reflective of what needs to be done in the broader world as a whole. So I wanted to thank you for that and the work you're putting. I think it's amazing. Thank you so much. That means a lot. And I mean, thank you for both of you doing what you're doing too and bringing light to such important topics and I'm really honored to be able to talk about it more and thank you so much for allowing me to share that no it's, it's been our pleasure um yeah. like I said we'll have you back we'll have you back on the cast just to chat too but we'll we'll get you on the panel once we uh, get some episodes rolling and um that'll be a lot a little more formal and and a bit of kind of more like a, a proper like envision a panel on a on a what do they do panels on? I, I haven't been out of the house in like nine months. It's called a spade, right? It's called I'm a thinking spade. like, I don't know, like American Idol or like- Right, exactly. <laughs> the stage, yeah. Well, speaking of yeah. American Idol, totally random fact. A kid I grew up with, um, an old friend of mine is going to be on American Idol on Wednesday. Oh, that's no okay. Yeah, that's really if, cool. If you're watching, it's my buddy, Jake Mathias. Shout out to Whoa. Jake, who's not listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we will get you back. Um, if you want to let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah. So, um, mostly I'm girl with a side review on my platform. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram is my main platform. So it's girl with a side review on there. Um, I also have Twitter that's pretty new, but, uh, the name's too long. So it had to be G W a, um, side review, I think. So we'll yeah. send us the info. We can, we can attach it to the link. <laughs> yeah. To I think the, those are the only platforms I use. I'm also on TikTok with girl with a side review. I was but... just going to ask no TikTok yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's there. It's yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm working on that one uh, right now. I just have like cocktail recipes and stuff, but that's part of the new year's plan too. So more yeah. videos. <laughs> my my wife is me. <laughs> telling me the TikTok is the place she's all up on it the is. trends, right? She knows she's like, your Instagram's for old people. I'm like, Oh boy. Like I need to do, so, <laughs> I like the reels. So at least I can do the TikTok a little bit. Like I, I'm going to try it this year too. I think we're going to bring four elements to TikTok. And yeah, I think that's a good idea. That would be it's hilarious. The place. It, it would be so funny. It could be fun. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Well, this has been awesome. I, again, I appreciate you joining us. Um, guys, you can find Taz, again, as she said, at Instagram is her main handle, at Girl with Cider Review. Um, give a shout out, give her a follow, give her some likes to some of her content there. And make sure you follow, um, hashtag no apologies. And our shirts are still available too. They are. We might have to uh, stock up on more because last time I checked, they were low stock and I couldn't even order any of them. That's a good so thing. So I'm going to have to connect uh, with Smiles Apparel again, see if we can restock those. But Sweet. they are still a couple available right now. But uh, stay tuned for that. I'll give updates on them too. 
Awesome. And that can be th found through your Instagram page as well on your it link? It can. It is. There. Excellent. So you guys know where to find Taz. Go get one of those No Apology shirts. And um, Robin, it's been great chatting, brother. Always, brother. And Taz, you stick around for a minute. We're just going to close off here. And thank you, everybody, for listening. It's been another awesome episode. Next week, we actually get to sit down with Mark from Sidewalk Beer Shop in Guelph. And we're going to learn a little bit about um, how the COVID liquor laws helped him, you know, succeed with his dream in opening a bottle shop. So I'm looking forward to that chat because that is also one of my dreams. So um, that'll be fun. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next week. No, 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 no.